Hi, I'm John. I'm Andrew. And this is Agree to Disagree. This is actually the second part of our conversation about Final Fantasy Spirits Within. Oh, uh, this was uh, Final Fantasy Spirits Within is a really fascinating thing. Also, open disclosure, I definitely watched it like yesterday at probably around six. Um, I got you beat. I watched it yesterday, probably around ten o'clock at night. So we're both because t- I we're went, both terrible at doing our job. I went with Ben to WrestleMania. No, I heard. <laughs> I actually heard that SmackDown was pretty intense yesterday. Yeah. Uh, who ended up winning the Orton versus Cena fight? Oh, it was John. John Cena, of course. Uh, why am I asking this? God damn it. Like, I actually I actually realized the stupidity of asking that about midway through the statement where I'm like, who won against John? Why am I? Why would I do that? Why would I ever ask who won against Cena? The answer is always that Cena buried the competition. I believe the real winners were the audience members. Uh, correction. I mean, I feel like the real winners in any John Cena fight are the American people. <laughs> God bless America. Hey, man, I got Trump. Let me have Cena, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Let me have my small bit of happiness. That's all I got. <laughs> All right, so I'm dying to know, what did you think of the movie? Okay, so I, I think the best way of putting it is, I, I came up with the term yesterday, uh, aggressively bland was <laughs> was the term I had. <laughs> um, I Here's the thing, like, admittedly, you came in with, you were the one who came in with very strong feelings about this when we, when we started, mm-hmm. yes, when we started last week. And I just, I watched it. And I couldn't really muster that much emotion from it. And maybe maybe it's just I mean, we'll we'll get into this, but like yes. let, me, let me put it this way. I, I am a Magic the Gathering player. I, I play it religiously, and I was selling off a shitload of cards yesterday. And I was I essentially chose while watching Spirits Within to de sleeve the cards that I was selling while watching it, and then realized I was more focused on what, what cards I was selling than the actual movie. <laughs> Uh, that is that is how bored I got. Is man, that's a really interesting card that won me a lot of games. Treasure Cruise is great. Oh shit, what's happening? All right, where was I? Oh. And and this is not saying I was being unprofessional and actively because whenever we do these things, there's always better stuff that I need to do sitting around. You know, we're human beings, but this is the first time that the small thing that I've I've needed to do has enticed my attention span more than the thing that I am supposed to be watching. It's actually funny you bring up Magic the Gathering as a complete sidebar. Oh, yeah. Um, I randomly pulled out my old Magic deck yesterday as well. Like, I did, I've never really been a Magic the Gathering player, but I've uh-huh. always had this, like, old, one of those portal decks that you get. Oh, uh, yeah, the starter ones. Yeah. Yeah, and I just pulled it out, and I, I was like, yeah, I want it. Let's just, I haven't looked at these in a long time, and I took them out, and I separated the the, the mana from the, uh, the magic-colored cards. Yeah, right. Um, and then, like, you know, anyway, I, I was just, I, I laid them all out, and I was just kind of looking at them, and I was like, for no reason at all, which just makes me think that maybe, for some reason, you and I are, like, linked in That is way. a, I mean, we do run a podcast together. <laughs> I feel like that, I feel like that naturally lends itself to that. No, but... Just uh, what were the odds, uh, really? I, I, no, that's really bizarre, but, like... I was actually more involved in de-sleeving cards than I was in the movie. And obviously, l- let's get into this, but I feel like so, I should be doing the questioning this time around. All right. Um, I want to I wanna throw a few notes out there first yeah. that I took uh, while w- watching the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, my first impression when the movie first started yeah. uh, was that it was... Uh, the music notes, just, they just kind of hit me, and I'm like, I'm like, this music, this sounds really fucking familiar. This sounds like... One of the one of the Schumacher Batman films. It's and then I really? went onto the Wikipedia entry no. and guess who did the soundtrack to Are the you movie? Kidding me? It was Elliot Goldenthal, who also did the soundtracks for both Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. So the guy who <laughs> did the Schumacher Batman movies also did what? There were some there. The, go if if anyone wants to watch this movie, go back and listen to it. There are a few like major musical themes that play through the movie that are just straight out of Batman. If I'm feeling, if, if John who is editing this in the future is really ambitious, he's going <laughs> to cut gonna in, edit in. I'm going to, I'm going to edit in some music right now. And if I wasn't lazy, that is where you would have heard. Valid. <laughs> but I, I feel like there's also, I don't know. May, I, I, I'll admit that I assumed it was Uematsu because I assumed that Uematsu just kills everybody who is involved in Final Fantasy music that <laughs> isn't Uematsu on principle. Like a, how dare you touch my series? I will murder you. Like a really possessive boyfriend kind of kind of thing mm-hmm. with the Final Fantasy series. I assumed it was Uematsu. It had enough things that sounded like Uematsu where I'm like, that 
seems relatively... I think the opening track might actually be the opening track of every single... So, random thing. The Final Fantasy games have a have a singular opening track that they always do, which is the... And I thought that was the opening song of the of the movie, and maybe I'm just losing my mind, but I thought that was what that was, and I just assumed it was Uematsu for the rest of the film. It's a possible... I mean, it, it is possible that he had his hand in parts of it I but it's also considering but Sakaguchi also directed, I wouldn't be too shocked. But uh, no, I, I don't doubt that he during, made during the soundtrack. This, this other guy made the soundtrack in 2001. I think that was also around the time that Yuimatsu was uh, kind of distancing himself from Square and kind right. of going more freelance. Can I ask? Do either of us know which uh, which Final Fantasy game was in production when Spirits Within? Happened? So this was 2001. So it would have been Final Fantasy 10. It may have been nine. I'm actually going to look this up. Because 2000, the PS2 came out in around around 2000 2001. Sure. So that means that Final Fantasy X was shortly after that, because Final Fantasy X, if it wasn't a launch, it wasn't a launch day game because that was that that was uh, held by the bouncer. <laughs> right, that happened. That classic SquareSoft yeah, game. Yeah, so we totally just made Ivalis. It, actually, I kind of like Ivalis being its own thing. <laughs> Maybe that's just me being petty and trying to separate things from the terrible final fantasy series that i see in modern times but you know what i'm i'm selfish hang on let me see here no some while you're doing your uh, quick search i yes. also want to note that there were a lot of times that the way that the the clothing and the hallways inside the corridors and the lab and all that made me feel it had a very doom three feel to oh, it. oh dear god you are right like, uh, the ff10 released in North America in December 17, 2001. Booyah. So I'm left to assume <laughs> that Uemat... Well, hang on. Let's add in some production schedule. So even... Oh, God. Even production schedule-wise. Holy crap. Nine was released in 2000? Wow, that's a fast turnaround. I, you know what? Now that I'm looking at this... They must have been two separate no, hang teams. On. So eight was 1999. Seven was 97. Dude, I think the Final Fantasy... No, no, no. All right. Six was 94. All right. Um, I was worried that Final <laughs> Fantasy might have been the first annual franchise, and I was really, really worried there for a moment. All right. So um, we, we, we're, we've gone way off track. We're talking oh, about Final Fantasy. No, I know. But what you would consider ultimately more interesting Final Fantasy topics. <sighs> I, I was trying real hard to deal derail this audience. I apologize. <laughs> I did not succeed. So, all right. So let's let's talk spirits within. So, okay. d watching it again, what mm -hmm. was your opinion? I actually I still like the movie. It starts off very slow. The movie, right. like I even made a note. Um, you're 38 minutes into the movie before you actually see what happens when a spirit touches someone. Sure. You, like you, that is almost a third of the way through the film. Right. And that's ridiculous. Like, like here's this big thing, and everyone talks about how dangerous it is, and the world has collapsed, but you don't really know the consequences. Like, they could, they had a perfect opportunity at the very beginning of the film when Aki is down on the planet and she's collecting that sample, and you have uh, the the hero soldier team um, led by Alec Baldwin. Uh, <laughs> Which, by the way, that blew my mind, hearing his voice and the sound of, like, uh, the, what looked to be, like, a maybe early 30s mm -hmm. brown-haired man, especially since I imagine Alec Baldwin <laughs> as Alec Baldwin from 30 Rock. Oh, it's doesn't like everybody, this, though? This graying, like, mid-40s, just, like, uh, Alec Baldwin, aggressive boss of a person. You either think of Alec Baldwin as 30 Rock, or you think of Alec Baldwin as the host of Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Can it be both? No. Hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so no, all right, yeah. Oh, so, so keep going. Another, th another first impressions on the film. Going back, uh, the animation has not aged well. Like the actual character animation, we could do so much better now on a budget. I actually like, agree completely. The, the the it is obvious that they were dealing with much more primitive yes. tools than we use these the, days. The thing is, and uh, I was actually going to make this, but since we're already in this discussion, I feel like we might as well just dive deeper. So one thing that did strike me was the actually semi-realistic proportions of each of the characters. Like, they look like their counterparts. Like oh, yeah. Each, like, Buscemi doesn't look like Buscemi because I don't think no. you could ever make a proper <laughs> being to look like Steve Buscemi because he's a very uniquely featured human being. And not you know to what? say he's ugly, because I'm not saying no, he's no, ugly, because no. I goddamn love Steve Buscemi. I, but I don't think you could ever successfully replicate Steve Buscemi to the point where I believe that that is Steve Buscemi. No, it, it, the, you would have a real hard time falling into the uncanny valley if you tried to model him realistically. 
you you hit his features desire being yeah. accentuated. But I will say as, as someone who was watching this, I guess what is it, fifteen years out? Yeah. I actually really, really did enjoy Shit, the way sixteen. I yeah, right. I really didn't enjoy the way things looked. Like the don't get me wrong, it didn't age well. No. But it aged in a I'm kind of okay all, with this. All of the of environments way. are those are detailed and beautiful. So I'm actually going to mention this and interrupt you quickly. No. There is a shot at the very end of the film where you see a hawk going over, right. going over a canyon. Oh yeah, the canyon with the that snowy. Is a yeah, beautiful shot. It is amazingly well framed. The animation looks awesome. It looks like actual mountains. Okay. That was the moment that sold me on the tech of like maybe they did have something. So that was brilliant looking. The the back to your original question. How do you feel about the movie? And I would assume that is how it pertains to the story of the film. I, I would take it as such a... I feel like the reviews were a little harsh on it. Like, I've definitely... imagine. Okay, imagine this isn't a CG movie and it's just a movie. Sure. Um, the story isn't bad. Like, it's yeah. it's not a bad story. You've got, you got, your, you've got your villain who's, doing, who's making all of these decisions and they're motivated decisions. As played by Kevin Bacon. <laughs> That's played by Kevin Bacon, the greatest of actors. No, that wasn't Kevin Bacon. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, it's the one I it was, was James Woods. No, it's the one I always confuse him with, which is James Woods. <laughs> no, I legit made that mistake. Keep that in the edit. You got that wood, you no, got that, that wood smoke bacon. No, it's, it's mm, damn it. No, it's, it's me legitimately being a dumbass. I thought it was Kevin Bacon because, like, I legitimately can't see the difference between him and James Woods. I assume they're the same person. So you got you got James Woods doing his very best impersonation of Gaston that he can pull off. Which was pretty solid, <laughs> mind you. That was actually halfway decent. Um, and uh, The Gaston uh, impression, not the character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, except instead of vying for Aki's heart or Belle's heart. He, he's vying he, on he's, how to destroy the planet. Yes, he, he except he he's vying on a way to... He's basically on his own revenge plot he is taking revenge against this against the phantoms so we'll get into my actual like long form criticism soon because i really <laughs> want to hear your opinions on this okay so he you've got this character this villain character who is going he's got he's driven by a singular goal yep. and that is to destroy the phantoms because they killed his wife and his daughter and i do i do love that motivation that was actually really good especially his lieutenant just kind of walking and be like uh, what are you doing general and him being like right so ever tell you about my family, and that was actually a really nice touch that I enjoyed quite a bit, and the fact that the Zeus cannon is just there. Yeah. I liked the idea of that not being something that just kind of, like, hand-waved into existence, but something that was established in-universe mm -hmm. as having built as an emergency backup weapon in case everything goes wrong. That was kind of cool, and I was actually very okay with the movie just being like, this exists. Shut up. Of course it would exist. Yeah. I was actually very okay with that. Yeah. And Okay, so... I think that the most boring and strange character in the movie is actually the main protagonist, um, Aki, partially because like played by Ming Na Wen. Yes, um, um, who who I only know as uh, as May in Agents of Shield, and I only know her as Mulan. There so. you uh, <laughs> there you go. All right, I Sorry, mean, continue. <laughs> she she plays kind of a Mulan esque character. She's headstrong. She yes. knows what she wants, and she's going to go for it. Yes, and the thing is. She she plays a good, strong, vulnerable character she when she doesn't act like a complete fucking alien. There were a lot like, of moments where, I don't know, the character just doesn't... Uh, you're right, when the character just doesn't feel like a person. Yeah. like the Okay, so this is partially her motivations and partially um, the animation. So I'm going to break these two parts down. Her right. motivations are driven by the fact that she's been infected by a phantom... And it's been isolated, yeah. but it still kind of manipulates her dreams. And that was a really good reveal. No, I actually really like that reveal. That's cool, that. except I don't understand. I I get where they were going with the plot. That makes sense. Yeah. I just don't understand how she could made that conclusion. I don't. I don't feel like she took all the steps she needed to take to come to that conclusion. Sure, I understand that. Um, that being said, uh, the thing that really bothers me about her character is that she has a lot of weird, like, head twitches when she's talking. I never actually noticed it that. It bothered the crap out of me the entire movie, because she's got this kind of thing where, like, the, I know that they're trying to, like, give vitality or make it, like, you know, she's got that hair in her face, and she's like, but it's like, that's just bad design, then. <laughs> sure. Like, well, I, because no actual, to put it in human perspectives, no actual human director would ever film their actress 
flipping hair out of her no. face. No. Because you as a human director would be like, that's not a good shot. You were flipping hair out of your face. Not Why at all. I do that? Um, I do like the uh, economy of the 3D animation in that anyone who's not a main character is basically an army soldier, and they're always in full armor, so you can just use the same model. That was... <laughs> <laughs> That was that. Cl- it reminds me of like a lot of my a lot of my favorite old early '90s anime, where you're like, "That's clearly a reused oh, entire yeah. animation," and that's the only reason anime has speed lines, especially the early stuff. Is how do we make use of this without bankrupting the company? Exactly. <laughs> um, there, it, 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 like, so by and large, I still really like the the plot of the movie. Sure. Um, it's got some so- some down points, but by and large, like. It's just it, it. It's a middle of the road sci-fi film. It, it they do some awesome things with the visuals. The phantoms look great. Um, yeah. The designs of them are great. Uh, with actually the design of all the creatures except the main like soldier alien monsters. I, those, I think those were the weakest of all of them. At least then, the soldier alien monsters were made in an argument of, oh, fuck it, we're already getting into spoiler territory. Really, who cares? The <laughs> argument of the entire thing with the soldier alien monsters is that that is how our planet died, so welcome to what happened. So at least there's some level of discussion there, being that there are their, their art was purposely kind of simplified, or at least made to look like ours to make a point of... Mm -hmm. symbolically, which was essentially a sledgehammer in my face. But, you know, Sakaguchi has never been good at subtlety. So I've got I've got two other points. Um, uh, First of all, as as just a minor note, a technical thing. Yeah. um, The way that they handle lighting on uh, skin isn't great, but that I give them I will give them the benefit before you jump in, I will give them the benefit of the doubt. This is two thousand one. This is before we really nailed like subsurface scattering for flesh. Uh, <laughs> you just use the phrase subsurface scattering, and I think my brain may have just completely stopped just from a okay, combination so of for confusion people who don't know, and having no idea. Okay, what's for going people who on, don't know, I have a background. myself, <laughs> I went. I, I have a background in three D animation. Yeah. Um, I went to college for. I went to Digipen in Redmond um, <laughs> the, to learn the, to become place, a game. What you mean? The place is street down from the beer we're having. <laughs> yeah. By the way, we're in the back room of the Hi-Fi. Mm-hmm. Come down, down to Hi-Fi in Redmond, yeah, actually, Washington. Really, come say hi. Legitimately, we're not just here because they're the only place that would let us film. We're here because <laughs> we really enjoy this. place. Place and that's why we're here. Oh yeah. Um. So I'm getting a not sponsored. All right. I was getting a bit of a buzz. No, no, uh, totally. <laughs> um, so but, uh, the but, last, but, uh, but. the last. Uh, so to answer uh, your question, subsurface scattering is the way that the light yeah. shines through flesh, and the, you can use the light will go a few layers mm-hmm. into the skin, so you get it, it, it. It's what gives flesh its depth when you're doing 3D and keeps things from just looking like plastic toys. Right? Is that why everybody looks so pale in this movie? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So that bothered me. And it was something I had to get over and i just kind of ignore it because they couldn't do that back then i didn't know the reason but that would certainly explain it gives me a better context on knowing what's going on the thing that bothered me the most about this movie is the very last spoken line in the movie is dr sid is standing in front of this field of like little particles of spirit like gaia floating back into the atmosphere and stuff like that is that the oh it's warm the very last line of the movie is, oh, it's warm. Motherfucker, that is the last line of the that movie. That is a bullshit line to end the movie on. Like, okay. that bothered the crap out of me. I have a long rant about Final Fantasy and Sakaguchi as a franchise, but I'm going to save that until we're done with the movie criticisms. It's so, sort of, it, it, it has a feeling like you're, you, you sat down and you had like 150 pages of script that were yeah. blank pages and you just started writing and then you got to the last page and you're like, well, I guess I'm done. It, it, you know, it feels like there was, and, and I will say this from a script standpoint, because as someone who actually writes film scripts and as someone who has done this numerous times, I will tell you that there was clearly no editor who was willing to tell the screenwriter no. And I guess that's what frustrates me the most about this film is the potential is there. It's an awesome the- looking movie. 15 years out, I still believe those are people. Now, don't get me wrong. I also don't have the 3D background uh, that John has, but I will openly admit that like those are convincing animation models. They look pretty yeah. awesome. I'm down with this plan. Yeah. The writing is kind of garbage. And the... I would say kind of garbage in the way that... Okay, let me rephrase this because I said the same thing for the Super Mario Brothers movie. The Super Mario Brothers movie is interesting and entertaining but also terrible. Final Fantasy Spirits Within is more rushed in pacing 
but like decently written. It's mediocre, I guess is the term I'm looking for. So you start this movie with uh, narration by Aki, like her inner monologue. Which, by the way, general opinion from my perspective, the second you start a movie with narration, you're already fighting a losing battle. Right. But I, when you do that, it kind of sets you up. So I'm, as a viewer, kind of expecting a book ending thing where you end it with that sort of like, here's the setup for the story. You're right. And then here's the end. You're, you're actually very right. That's they, a common trope in it, screenwriting. This yeah. movie would have been better if they had either done that or just taken out that last line altogether. Yeah. Just leave it silent so that you have Dr. Sid kind of experiencing this moment. He doesn't need to say anything. Because also Dr. Sid up to that point has been established as a character that is very, very based on the metaphysical and faith based, despite being a scientist and someone who's very, very data based. He is also very easily swayed by the ideas of belief and seeing that realize would probably not get a verbal reaction out of him. I imagine I imagine Dr. Sid is a very, very quiet man who just be like, huh. and like that'd be the most reaction you'd get a very confused yet quiet huh as he's observing all of this in detail i i don't know maybe i i and i agree with you because that line did bug me and it's something that did get to me where i'm like that doesn't seem natural or like what the what the normalized last line would be so of all of the main characters in the movie dr sid is actually the weakest he has very few agree. motivations his only motive stated motivation is that he wants aki to outlive him like, that's his only motivation. Which, I'll admit, when you accidentally get an adopted daughter in the form of someone who shows up at your, I guess, science division and suddenly just becomes your new apprentice, that's a reason. Sure, but they didn't they develop didn't... that relationship enough where I buy into that idea. Right. And the I agree completely. The movie kind of starts off... Um, it starts off, I get the impression, kind of after she's been away from Earth for a while... Um, I got that feeling too. Because th there's all this extra story that is kind of dialogued in between Aki and Alec Baldwin. <laughs> Ming-Na Wen and dialogue, Alec Baldwin. Dialogue with, in, about her just kind of disappearing. They were in a relationship. In is a very good term for it, actually, <laughs> because that just kind of. I, I always use the term blitz. Yeah. It, I always use the term blitz because I imagine it as just the movie is trying to blitz this by me as if I wasn't paying attention, but I'm, I'm paying attention movie and you can't just blitz five years of story by me in a five minute discussion because I'm watching this. I'm listening. No. So I, I get what drives Alec Baldwin's character. I get what drives Aki's character, although I don't. I feel like she makes a few logic leaps. Uh, you know what? Um, I'll actually disagree with that. I'll understand what goes by Alex Baldwin's character. I really don't get a lot of, a lot of Aki's he, character. He, her character is motivated by, well, basically, she needs to figure out this thing. Otherwise, she's going to die. <laughs> I'll explain why I disagree with that. But first, let's harp on Sid. <laughs> okay. Let's harp on Sid for let's a moment. Let's harp on here. Sid. Um, Sid's character, the only thing that's motivating him is he just... He has this theory that he brings up quickly and then burns his nose. He's like, keep it in your brain. And it's like, okay, was this important? This doesn't feel like it was driven that, by anything. That entire scene. That, that scene should have taken place after the moment where they're in the council. I agree completely. That scene okay. baffled me so much from a writing standpoint where so, it seemed like it was trying to establish motive, but motive hadn't been established because actions hadn't happened. Yeah. So I just kind of... Was like why are why are we talking about how notes need to be burned before I know what your opinions are and why your notes yeah. should be burned? She opens up your diary and she starts reading it, or you hand her, her you, the diary, he and you're like, "Here, read it. this." And she's and like, then "Oh." He, then okay. he lit it on fire, and then that was the gag, and I was really confused. Yeah, a lot of this movie like just didn't make sense from that context. It it, it was slightly baffling, <laughs> and I I don't know. So I, yeah, I mean. Um, to no. your to your point, yeah, I still like the movie. I think it has a lot of flaws. There are a shit ton of flaws with the movie, but all and it, you know it, it does run kind of slow. But I mean, kind of slow. I it, the the weird thing is the funny thing is I don't even disagree with you about slow. I actually think it moved too fast. Once again, I ran into this issue where I I was timing the movie because once again 
I was sleeving magic cards and was more entertained by that. Um, I ran into the issue where I started flicking over to the movie every now and then with my mouse just to see at what minute I was at. And in in the opening of the film where we're establishing Aki and uh, Alec Baldwin, because I don't actually remember his character names. Rela- uh, seriously, I don't actually remember his character name. Well, we can just call him the captain. Sure, we'll call him the captain. Well, the captain and Aki's relationship just kind of fucking happens. At like minute thirteen, well, and at that point, I know nothing about either of them, and it's one of those classic moments where if this was a real movie that focused on character acting, if this is a real film like you had talked about before with legit actors, and we had Alec Baldwin and Ming Na Wen on screen, this would be minute thirty. They would have already had a moment to discuss all of this beforehand, and I would see active development of relationship rather than just being just having it vomited at me by the film because it seemed like it came out of nowhere to be like oh and also these two were once together and now we're just gonna have a have a snarky argument the thing is this is all the relationship you're gonna get i believed that they had a relationship before they fight like people who were in a relationship together i don't disagree i don't disagree with that um i disagree with that being at minute 10 when (laughs) nothing else has been established Okay. I disagree with that being so immediate that it takes me out of the film because I recognize the tropiness of this is really strange. That's that's true. So the the captain at the beginning of the film, they come back from the mission after saving Aki and they uh they kind of uh uh you know, he the captain's infected by a phantom and they have to save him and she saves his life. And then, like, a scene later, you have Dr. Sid being like, now you saved his life. He saved your life. You saved his. That Let's was, leave it at that. Wow, is it so is, off-putting. And, it, it, and it's just kind of, it's kind of like. If, they, if that, here's the thing, and I, I will make this argument completely. If that had been the establishment of their relationship, if that had been the moment where the two of them actually decided to know each other better and we didn't have this fake baggage that drives the rest of the film, I would actually be very okay with that of a, Oh, that's kind of that's kind of adorable. You saved him from like soul eating monsters. Fine. Like, I'll accept that. And I'll accept Sid being like, hey man, just because you saved him doesn't mean you have to be into him. Like, I'll accept that from an argument standpoint. It was it, it's this weird glit it was it, like it was like a glitch in writing tropes. It, but where it, they wrote the trope, it just didn't feel like it fit the situation. Yeah, the whole de- the whole delivery of it was just sort of like a yeah, that is all that happened. Oh, is there more to this? Yeah, fuck off, Sid. I don't need you <laughs> telling me how much. I imagine that that is actually what is happening in Aki's head in like a real well-written perspective. It's, yeah, Sid, I don't need you telling me how I need to feel about, about the men who are involved in my life. I don't, I don't need this. I don't need your commentary. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just imagined that because I imagine as, uh, Aki is a strong female uh, strong female lead who, uh, who, don't, who don't need no Sid telling her how she lives her life. So, no, I I don't know. It's just one of those things that uh, there are many, many. The problem is, I think that's why I never really got into Spirits Within is because when I was watching that, there were so many moments like that that completely took me out of the film where I'd be I'd be watching it. I'd be kind of liking what I was seeing. The animation. Sure. As we talked about before, is outdated, but it's outdated, but it's passable. It's it's not bad Uh, there. I would actually argue higher than you. Maybe it's because I don't have the actual degree in this like you do where it it doesn't pain me it's as it's much. in my, my problems have to do mostly with like the kind of like cloth simulation sure. and like the deeper technical artistry stuff yeah. that they couldn't control and, it, and I, I just had to get over that it's 2001 2000 no, it was a technical achievement <laughs> but also as someone who has reviewed uh movies from the 40s on their writing capabilities that's also still not that much of an excuse everybody has moments where they fail at certain things that probably shouldn't have been something they failed at Right, especially from a timeline perspective. But what, what I'm saying is, well, is I, I, my argument to defend the the animation itself is like you're not going to judge a film from the 1940s or earlier for having like stuttering film moments. Like you're that's also all, right. that's all up to the guy who's winding the fucking camera. <laughs> but I, I guess I guess in that degree you are right. It, where you're cutting out. It's it, okay. I guess you are right in that way where it's the it's the frustration of of animation, really, of when you see something that's animated, you immediately assume that it's modern day because of the simple fact of animation and just being like, right, it, it's animated, it's current, it was it was made recently. And I don't know, Spirits Within kind of suffers from that where I, I watch it and immediately assume I'm watching something from the current era and realize that it almost immediately that it doesn't measure up to those technical standpoints and it's a good looking enough film i just 
I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the same point, you could I could argue you could go back and watch the original Toy Story. Man, oh. the, the visuals of that. I've actually the animation. Done that the animation is still great. The story is still great, but the the visual of it is like pretty mediocre. But well, they're also dealing with the most advanced computers in 1995. Right. It's also not <laughs> as mind-boggling as it was during the day. And I think that's the one frustration that animation suffers from, is that it, it will never be as great. Like, it's always striving to achieve lifelike sort of models. And eventually, that's uh, those are the issues that you run into, where it never looks exact. Okay, I'm going to call this right now. 2025 is when they do a 30th anniversary re-release of Toy Story with the most modern rendering techniques. Are you telling me you are currently calling a Pixar is going to remake its greatest film because fuck it, we don't have any movies? Um, no, I'm calling Disney is going to re-release Toy See, Story. Now that's a very different, that <laughs> is a very fuck different it, argument. We want free money. See, that's a very different <laughs> argument because that I can completely see happening. And um, <laughs> Quick note, do you mind if we, we delay for a second? I really need to take a piss. Oh, go for it, go for it. Ben, ben, talk into the microphone. I will hold the microphone. And now we have talk our it, friend Ben. Talk into the microphone. Got hey, it. Hey, Ben, how you doing? I'm doing well. How you doing, Let, John? Let's have a second where we talk about WrestleMania. <laughs> Are you talking about the, the SmackDown because WrestleMania is in two months? No, let's talk about uh, the, the wrestling arena match we went to last night. Yes, that one. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you enjoy it? It was your first one. Yeah, um, so I'm not much of a WrestleMania guy, like or, or WWE guy. God, you're, you're calling that wrong. It's going to drive me nuts the entire time. Well, okay, so you pointed out the fact that there was a WrestleMania sign hanging, and also you were like, hey, you want to go to WrestleMania? Did I say? Oh, yes, you that did. Was, look, we're not going to talk about that <laughs> when I'm holding a microphone. That was a weird... Yeah, so that that, that was a SmackDown. That was, that was a WWE SmackDown that came yes. to... Uh, I don't know if we talk about the locale that we are in. No, that's so fun. We went to Key Arena. Okay, um, cool. We we what well, we're going to Buzz Market for Seattle Center. I don't, I don't know if people are like <laughs> following you or some shit. No, it's, it's okay. It, it, no, it, it's a known quantity where it. I I live in the Seattle area. Got it. I mean that's yeah that's pretty vague enough. So, but yeah, so you went. So we went to uh, WWE SmackDown. Yes, and uh, I got to see John Cena. Yeah, man, I'm so glad you showed up. So John was a little <laughs> bit late for context. Yes, uh, I, I missed the first two, well, first one and a half rounds. <laughs> Again, matches. That, that not gonna be, that not gonna be. Right. Yeah, he missed about the first like 40 minutes. So I know you missed one match for sure, mm -hmm. which is also quality, good match. And then you missed one uh, promo segment, which is also really good. Uh, but you caught. It, the whole show was fantastic. No, the whole okay. show was just so, to ah, answer to your, a T. To answer your question, I had a great time. Good. Um, I know that sometimes when I go to public events like that, I'm not like the most rowdy person. Mm -hmm. And there's also part of it where I'm not going to just kind of jump in and be rowdy for the rowdiness sake. Like I felt, I feel very phony if I do that. And like, I'm don't, like, I don't know what I'm doing with uh -huh. the exception of when Daniel Bryan shows up. I know what he's about. Oh man. <laughs> so I'm so glad he came out at the, for the dark match. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was fucking rad. Be so he came out at the very beginning in case you actually didn't see the whole episode he came out at the very beginning and literally the like, key like exploded it was oh yeah it was predictable like of course like he's the hometown hero of course he's gonna come out first oh yeah but that place lit the fuck up and it was awesome uh and no one here's the bit so i don't go to live wrestling shows terribly often it's only my third one i've been to because Kansas City, where I used to go, uh, turns out it's not a very popular place for wrestling to show up from time to time. That kind of surprises Seattle, me. And Seattle, Seattle actually kind of shocks me because they only get it like once or twice a year, which seems really bizarre because they have a really good crowd. Um, I was reading a bunch of like reviews of the show after the fact, and almost all was like, "Damn, that crowd was hot! Like that crowd was super for it." Uh, but yeah, so Daniel Bryan shows up and the place just like loses it. Oh yeah, hometown uh, boy retired and as a special appearance, right? Like. And <laughs> typically, like I'm not the person who's like who's like screaming at the TV or doing any of that sort of stuff. Uh, what's called a mark out moment, in case you're curious. Uh, but the gentleman to the left of me, while I was waiting for you to show up, was also one of those like adult contemporary, like understood the meta of wrestling sort of gig. Uh, and so we just had a great time talking, and we had competing chants and. Like, it's fun to cheer for the good guy and awesome to boo at the bad guy. And you really get to live. Like, even if you're a poser and you don't know what to do, like, follow the other, th like, 30,000 people in the arena who's doing the same thing. So, for me, the greatest part of the evening yeah. was the John Cena match. Mm -hmm. That was great because you had uh, the Swamp Boys 
the Wyatt family. <laughs> Come out, and you know, you got you got Grandpa God in his uh, rocking chair, <laughs> and uh, uh, then you know, like the You're whole thing. Bray? Yes, he means Bray. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not going to use any names except for John Cena and Daniel Bryan. <laughs> That's that's all he knows to a well, you know Randy Orton. Oh yeah. So but anyway, right, so the, the match is going on, it's going back and forth, things look like it might not go John Cena's way. And then Have you met John Cena? Like well, that's No, but you know what I'm saying. Like the, the whole thing's building up, building up. Right. And then and then here comes here comes Daniel Bryan, and he's just like in his gray wife beater and like a long fucking beard and crazy ass looking. And by Daniel Bryan you mean Luke Harper? Yes, that is who I mean. Just making sure. Sorry. <laughs> I got I got confused. Everyone got really fucking excited. No, it's okay. You're new to this, and it, for and context, he's just like, stay, he's just standing there looking fucking intense. Like you you missed <laughs> the storyline, so I wouldn't blame you for getting that wrong. But yeah, so Luke Harper showed up and stared down uh, Bray Wyatt, and it's a, it was a feud that was ongoing for a long time. But you got to see the culmination of it, which is why people like lost their freaking minds over it, which is awesome. So it it was just an awesome match. Yeah. Um, and even as a guy who's not into wrestling, mm-hmm. um, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Good. It's always a big thing when I bring new people to wrestling because it's like, oh, they're going to think I'm a huge idiot and think this is all real. Or they're just going to think it's dumb no. anyway. I, or they're I, really going to like it. And I, I know that you know that it's not, that it's more show than it is real. I'm glad you had that faith in me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I wasn't. My favorite quote about the whole thing has got to be the, uh, my favorite quote about the whole thing has got to be the, uh, was it, the Max Landis quote, which is, Wrestling isn't real, but in the end, it's the most death-defying stunt show combined with some of the best live acting you can see. Now, it doesn't always work, but when it does work, it's the best television you can observe anywhere. And, like, in that regard, I totally understand that. You just watched a man dive off the ropes of a wrestling arena while throwing an elbow at a fool, and you know what? It didn't connect, but shit, you believe it connected, and some of the time, that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, felt like an announcer holding it up. Yeah. To, yeah. To <laughs> okay, now that I, I need to do a kind of wrestling intro, Ultimate Warrior style. Just, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> thank you, folks. This was a uh, wrestle mm. wrestling corner. <laughs> this is this, this is qu- this is the quick wrestling moment. Uh, yeah. I call on, it. Uh, game got it. So yeah, a new theme going on is <laughs> wrestling interlude. While we're changing shit up, we're just gonna talk about others. So, so, so admittedly, I was joking about this with Ben beforehand, where I'm like, Ben, you know what we need to do? We need to do an entire show where you introduce me and John to wrestling fundamentals. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of people would listen to that. No, that with, could be fun. With, with Ben being like, here are the old school, here's all the stuff from the Attitude Era that you need to pay attention Dude, to. I, I would, here are I, the matches that you need to watch. I okay. would host that on my channel. Like, no, that'd be fun as hell. I'd enjoy the, I'd that, enjoy the shit out of that. That'd be a lot of fun. And they're, they're all on YouTube too. I've, I've looked. There is no doubt YouTube that show. there is a huge intersection in, in to quote griffin mcelroy there is a huge intersection between people who love wrestling and big ass fucking video game nerds no but the, you know the, uh, <laughs> you're right one, one, of the, one of the best things recently that i got bored and decided to watch um so a person at my work is obsessed with the great kali for some reason and uh, <laughs> and uh, no i know I, I love that that caused like that much actual laughter in bed because i was like legit just like i don't know what's going on level laughter and uh, for some reason someone at my work is obsessed with the great kali and i ended up watching the great Kali Batista match where they're like yeah. stuck in a bamboo cage and yeah. I'm like this is the dumbest shit I have ever seen for context it was called a Punjabi <laughs> prison match which uh, that's not racist yeah it was, it was a little bit weird so basically it was two uh, two cages made out of uh, effectively bamboo uh, with like sharpened points at the top, like you're trying to like Vlad the Impaler, some motherfucker. It was seriously some Viet Cong level like no, booby it, trap bullshit. It actually was. It actually looked like you just like fell into a pit of barbed wire or whatever the hell it was, and it was <laughs> awful. But the so context real quick. Greg Holly is a seven one seven foot seven foot one inch tall. Uh, Indian bloke. Silent, by the way, silent. because of course. Well, he's but silent deadly. because he didn't know English very well, and they didn't want him to... Oh, like Arnold Schwarzenegger in his early movies. Yeah. Actual, actually, that's a good comparison point. They didn't want him to embarrass himself on the right. WWE stage oh, by being well, that, that guy who didn't know English. Yeah, that turned around kind of quick, though. Yeah. He, he started off... Uh, oh, you're tired. I can... I can, I can no, no, I'm just going to hold Okay. <laughs> that's fair. Sorry, uh, everybody. We're working, working off... Two and, microphones? Yeah, bitch and setup. It's great. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> actually pretty phenomenal. Uh, anywho. But yeah, so he was first billed 
as this giant, like basically the person who's going to like ruin wrestling in the capacity that no one's going to be able to beat him. Because at the time, like height and weight was determined if you were good or bad. And so which is had, why Andre the Giant was so great. Which is why he had big matches against uh, Batista, against The Undertaker. He had one against John Cena at some point. Uh, he was a big star, and he actually won the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, but after that, he kind of faded into obscurity because uh, wrestling is kind of the big thing where if you can't speak, if you can't actually put on the theatrical part of right. wrestling, you're not going to go anywhere. Plus, let's be a little bit honest, wrestling has its roots in American racism to a degree. Uh, no one's really going to go for the heavyweight champion who is a foreigner who can't speak English. No, the the only the only uh, heavyweight champion they would probably accept who is completely mute would be like, uh, uh, I'm going to fuck this up, God. The Undertaker. He's not mute. He's he not. barely talks. You're not wrong in that regard. He, well, I will disagree with that, but it's a nitpicky thing where yeah, he talks. It just what he says is short and sweet. He gets it out of the way. He he's he's very much like the philosopher wrestler, or what he'll say will be super important. I and think he won't say anything else. His uh, his uh, Galron eyes um, carry him pretty far. So <laughs> super super mini side story as a child. <laughs> Uh, my two cousins, one was into Space Jam, one was into wrestling, and they both got Christmas gifts, and they got the posters split for each child. And so one child who loved wrestling got Space Jam, and the other one who loved Space <laughs> Jam got wrestling. And as it turns out, the one who got the wrestling poster fell in love with wrestling immediately after that. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one who got the Space Jam poster never saw Space Jam, Aww. ended up watching it and actually hated it. Well, it's a terrible movie. Yeah, it's not great. People, but, <laughs> people, people claim to like that movie. That movie sucks. Right. That movie does, actually. The best really part suck. of that movie is when Bill Murray shows up. And that's about... I will also watch most things it. with Looney Tunes in it because I'm a sucker for early Warner animation because god damn it, Okay, it's not okay, funny. so we've gotten way deep, way, way, way no, deep no, off track. No, I assumed that you were cutting all right. this. Yes, okay, <laughs> no, no, I'm not cutting this. This is all going in. This is like, this is how far off topic we got with Spirits With It and how much yeah. I do not care. Let, let, let's let's bring an end to this, okay? All right, no, so, no, let, let's, let's so do at the So at the end of the day, um, I still like the movie. Admittedly, here's the thing. I remember, I distinctively remember disliking this film. I, I do, I remember not enjoying it in any way whatsoever. I remember seeing it in theaters and being really disappointed. I I still find some of the problems watching it again. I still find the story a bit bland. I still find certain characters not necessarily well written. But I will say I I enjoyed it to a certain extent. So it aggressively bland was my original description. I'm, I'm still mostly sticking with it. <laughs> I'm going to try and paint a, a metaphorical word picture here. Um, for the movie, the movie for me is kind of like a Twinkie. Sure. It, you've got this sweet, sweet cream filling that is surrounded by bullshit. Basically, <laughs> the beginning of the movie sucks. The end of the movie sucks. But in the middle there, there's a lot of fun that happens. Sure. So I, I actually have a bit of a thought of ex experiment to throw you right. And I want you to imagine this game as an, a Final Fantasy game. Okay. I want you to imagine this movie as a Final Fantasy game. Oh. Imagine you start as Aki, single player, wandering through the wastes of New York. You meet up with the rest of the team. You gain them as party members for a while. You deal with them. You deal with the whole Sid thing in a in an actual context of a cut scene. I can actually imagine the spirits within as a legit good Final Fantasy game. Let me tell you my story. This might be the last time. I was thinking more <laughs> the the Final Fantasy X. AKA. Let me tell you my story, and then I just want to punch Titus in the face. Oh yeah, no, that's exactly what I was going for. Hey, you were? Yeah, that that was a fucking direct quote, dude. <laughs> Oh my god, it was! <laughs> it's been that long since I wanted to listen to Titus's voice by choice. Seymour! <laughs> Never again. <laughs> oh, just, let me tell oh. you some more about Blitzball. So, a random side note, um, because I'm imagining this and I, I like really weirdly thinking about Final Fantasy games in occasionally different contexts. Can you imagine playing as a young Orin for the entirety of Final Fantasy X? Oh, that, and mm. the midway point being have to go find the child of my best friend and bring him back to this reality can you imagine that as like an actual final fantasy game topic because that would be awesome that that'd be so great that makes yeah. one of the best games of I all time of like young orin and then the breaking point is him literally dying and being <laughs> like 
I need to go find my best friend's son. Why? Shut up, other me that I'm not paying attention to. I need to go, uh, I need to go save it from my best friend, who I accidentally just damned to oblivion. Instead, they made X, they made 10 2, uh, which was, uh, I, I awful. still don't think 10 is as bad of an offender as 13. I feel like 13's hard. 10 2 is Final Fantasy fan service, the game. That You're not wrong. That like I was actually about to make an argument, and I y- you could hear the breath audience. I was like, <gasps> "No, fuck it, John's right. That's what that is." <laughs> no, I can't make a discussion about it. He's just right, and I I fully accept those moments. But no, seriously, can you imagine Spirits Within as a Final Fantasy game, no, rather than a movie? It actually it, be it would quite work. Excellent. Yeah, the 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 multi linear the kind of not linear. Sorry, the multi sci fi fantasy nature of it, where they kind of fuse together into a weird sort of balance so new york in this movie is basically um the the what's the the name of the town that shinra exists in midgar midgar is basically midgar it essentially is you have this major industrialized city in the middle of a wasteland yeah like that's what it is and then it involves dealing with a military force that ends Mm -hmm. up being too progressive as far as its choice of action which is very Mm shinra-esque especially in the later discs of that game where it's like so we're just gonna fire a giant mako cannon at diamond weapon why i don't know i don't have any other solutions all i've got (laughs) is a giant laser and that's all i have we're gonna fire a giant gun at meteor so i'm gonna turn the hammer that i have and everything is a nail and it's all i got like i'm sorry (laughs) but it, it reminds me a lot of the Shinra Corporation. Yeah. And it actually works really well as a game. Like when you actually think of it, and I think this is the one problem I have with Sakaguchi in this aspect of him as a filmmaker. I'm not against his ideas as a film. Uh, I, I actually like what he's presenting in this movie format. I just think his ideas work better as games. Spirits Within would have made for a great game. Can you imagine the idea of having your consistent villains, these like weird sort of spirits that just kind of appear out of the ground? Can you imagine the sequence in the impact crater from a 2D sense in a classic 16-bit sort of Final Fantasy of like trying to claw your way to the to the seven to the six spirit as you're just like getting mauled on various ends by by like these monsters. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. It actually work really well as a video game, but it, it's the one frustration I have with Sakaguchi where he can't work outside of the medium that he's chosen for himself. Yet he consistently chooses to work outside the medium he's chosen for himself. <laughs> it, it's this frustrating thing where I'm like, but but just make it a video game. You can do better. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, I have problems with Nomura, but I'm not about to get into it because we're going to be here all day. Yeah. Um, I, I I didn't hate it. I didn't really like it all that much, but it, it was an enjoyable enough film. Like, I, I bet you good money. I'm probably going to watch it again at some point in my life. I, I Maybe it's I disagree because I don't hold an animation degree, but I actually <laughs> enjoy the animation of Spirits Within more. I, I really think I liked it. The only animation I had any problem with was uh, mostly the actual character animation and not like anything else. Like yeah. everything else is fine. Um, and then when it comes down to character animation, if you want to boil down the parts that really bother me, it's mostly just Aki. Like, yeah. I just feel like her animation yeah. could have been better. And that's about it. Because like, well, she kept, as we pointed out before, she kept doing stuff that no director would allow an actress yeah. to ever do on camera, which is let me just flip my hair. Like, no, unless it's in the script, you are not touching your hair. Right. Unless it's motivated in some way. Kubrick would cut <laughs> off fingers. Like, things <laughs> would happen. Right. <laughs> but no, it's, no. it's an enjoyable enough film. Yeah. It's not terrible. I fully admit that I was kind of wrong in my hatred for it. As far as, like, I remember growing up and being like, this movie is awful. It was decent. Yeah. I, got, I got no arguments. So, do you want to wrap this up? I. How are we going to wrap this up? All right. Do, so, I, do I hand the microphone to the person saying All right, let, let's set this up. <clears throat> so, uh, go for it. Um, our friend Ben, who you heard in our little wrestling corner. Hey, I'm Ben. That is, <laughs> that is in fact, Ben. Um, he, oh, Ben, why don't you introduce, why don't, why don't you talk about this uh, this terrible injustice you've done to uh nerddom so okay so i I was talking to our lovely bartender about this as well where i was invited back to discuss the greatest crime in the galaxy apparently (laughs) uh so for context uh i have never seen a star wars movie or know anything about its lore or fandom or literally anything about it in any capacity uh well sans i saw rogue one and the whole (laughs) so here's the bit the whole reason this conversation got started is because uh, we, were, we were talking about the podcast as a whole, uh, and I mentioned that I really fucking hated Rogue One as a movie, as a concept. I 
immediately just dismissed it. Uh, and now I feel more justified in thinking that Star Wars is not worth my time. And so basically, yeah. Andrew, what are we going to do? And so our argument is that um, we're going to do what we always do. Mm -hmm. We're going to hear out the original points before observing it. Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to talk to Ben. We're going to talk about how it maybe has changed the way he sees things culturally. Because that's an important point to talk about, to discuss that maybe maybe John and I see the world differently because we experience it at a young age, and maybe we're wrong. I mean, that happens every episode. We're like, maybe maybe we messed up, because I think that's part of what this show yeah. is. But also, then we're going to watch it. Yes. And we're uh, gonna, For the record, folks, we're going to watch the f original trilogy. Oh, you mean, you mean the only ones no i mean we're not John? we're not we're not going to watch the prequels we're not going to watch <laughs> force awakens no that's we're going to watch episodes that's, 4 that's 5 again. and 6 so star yes. wars the empire strikes back and return of the jedi new hope yeah exactly we're going through the original 3 and we're going to see what uh we're going to see what ben thinks about it and we're mm -hmm. going to try the best we can i'm going to try and find the original cut but oh, i've got I, I i have the uh Unspecialized Hell, can editions. we just turn this into a weekend and just have the three of us watching, like, nine hours worth of movies? Yes, we can. All right, so we're doing that. <laughs> um, and, Ben, this is one thing that you'll understand one, maybe once you get a little bit more into this when we're in the next one. There's a, there's a reason that people like me and John claim the original as the only thing worth watching, and we'll talk about that next week, obviously, when we get into the real episode of why that's important to me and John. Um, but... For reference, yes, it's important enough to us where, no, you don't dare touch those Blu-rays or I will r light your hands on fire I if will the Blu-rays don't naturally do that because they might actually be the spawn of I will provide the despecialized editions. So we're watching these. We're watching the despecialized one, two, and three because yes, they were called one, two, and three. They were never four, five, and six. That was a lie given to you by George Lucas. Anyway, that's the next episode is us uh, watching with Ben. Ben, did you have a, th a point you wanted to make? Yeah, I mean, only only one tiny one is that what was the phrase you used uh, that I don't have? Because I definitely thought you said like when you grow more mature and you age more, do you understand what Star Wars is like? <laughs> Not in the least. And I was like, "Fuck you! I'm older than you. Uh, you, are. you have better <laughs> facial hair, but that's all you got on me at this point." My <laughs> goatee. But no, it's you know I. I just think it's kind of funny because you undercut your entire argument by saying, yeah, we're just going to ignore one, two, and three. It's like already you're already setting yourself no, up for... Yeah. Well, okay, okay. We're going to talk about this next week, okay? Yes. <laughs> so until next week, folks, you have a great evening, all right? Enjoy yourselves. Bye, everybody. <laughs>